Hello everyone, welcome to our PBL Level 1 Physics Project. Today we're going to talk about simple pendulum and the behavior of a simple pendulum and the period of a simple pendulum and how you change the period of a simple pendulum. And then uh, we're going to investigate what is going to be depending on. Is it depending on the angle? Is it depending on the mass? Is it depending on the length of the simple pendulum? And in the next part, we're going to investigate the graph of a simple pendulum. And now we're going to move to the materials. The materials that you're going to need is not going to be a lot. And if you want, you can give just the materials to the students and then you can ask them to um, set up for the simple pendulum or you can do the setup and then you can just do the observation part and the investigation part. So uh, for the setup of the simple pendulum, you're gonna need a base, all right? And for this base, uh, this is basically to be able to hold the long rod and we're going to need a mass set all right, so if you have like five different, that is going to be okay. But if you have more, or if you have like three, that is going to be fine. Uh, so this is to investigate the effect of math, uh, mass on a simple pendulum, period. And then we're going to need a protractor to be able to see the effect of the angle of the simple pendulum on its period. And we're going to need a stopwatch to be, able, uh, to be able to measure the time. We're going to need a clamp to be able to connect the two rods. And those two are kind of optional, but I'm going to use this, those two. Uh, any marker to be able to mark the string for certain distances. So you're not going to try to like measure the distance when you're hanging it. Uh, so you're going to mark the distance on the string so you can just uh, see that mark and then that's when you are going to stop. And I'm gonna need that binder clip to be able to hold my uh, string. So I'm not gonna cut different uh, lengths of strings. So I'm just going to use one long string and I'm just going to change the distance of it. And with this binder clip, I'm going to uh, clamp that to the rod. You're gonna need a string that is around like one meter or a little bit longer than one meter or it should be longer than your rod that it's going to be uh, f that is gonna be for your like swing for your pendulum and then you're gonna need a meter stick to be able to measure the distances and we're gonna need two rods. One is gonna be for the height of the simple pendulum and the other is going to be able to hang the simple pendulum. All right, so these are my materials. And again, uh, if you want, you can just put those materials on the table and you can ask your students to design uh, the setup. Or in the next part, I'm going to explain how to set it up. You can do the setup and then uh, you just move to the investigation part. Now we're going to talk about how to do the setup. For the setup, we're gonna use this base and I'm gonna use my long rod and I'm just gonna screw that in. And once this is ready, I'm going to clamp this short rod. That can be also a little bit longer, that short rod to the top of it. So first I'm gonna put the clamp and screw that, put this guy right here, and I'm going to screw that. So this is the setup for the uh, simple pendulum. And then I'm going to have my string. I'm not going to cut like uh, five different pieces of string. I'm just going to use one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this clip, liner clip, and I'm going to uh, tie it from the top so that it is going to be set there. And then I'm going to put it around here so it's not going to affect my motion. And now I'm just going to tie my mass to the end. So I'm going to start with 
uh, 20 grams. All right. And I'm going to put it a little bit higher. So I'm going to tie from here. All right, now this is our setup. And then we're going to be able to change this mass easily right now. So I can move that and make this uh, the length according to the ones that you're going to have the longest. All right, so this shouldn't like touch the ground. And then you should have enough angle to swing. All right, so this is the setup. Again, if you want, you can set it up like this and then you can move to the investigation right away or you can ask your students to do the setup by giving the picture and then uh, they should be able to set it up. And I choose to get my students to it because that way they're also uh, learning how to use the uh, lab equipment. All right. And now we're going to uh, move to our investigation part. All right, after you have the setup, uh, we're going to ask students, like, what can change? All right, so what can we change to be able to change the period of this pendulum? And most of the time, the most common uh, guesses for this is one of them is the angle. So if you have it like longer angle, then it's going to take longer time. And the other thing is going to be the mass. If you change the mass, then your uh, period is going to change. And the last one is the length. If you change the length, then your um, period is also going to change. So first, we're going to start with the investigation of the angle. So of course, you're asking your students, how do you measure? How do you uh, figure out if the angle is affecting or not? Once we have the protractor over there, we're going to be able to measure the angle. And what we need to do is we just need to measure the time for different angles and then see if there's a change, if there's a change, how it's changing. All right. So the setup uh, or the procedure for this design uh, is not going to be too difficult for the students. All right. And it's important that we're using the same string and we're using the same mass in the first part. All right. Now we're ready, so what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to have only three angles. Um, so I'm going to have 5 degrees, 10 degrees, and 15 degrees. All right, first I'm going to start with 5. So right now I'm, gonna, uh, I'm able to see that this is 5 degrees, and I'm just going to swing it. And the other important thing for a period, what we say, we're going to measure the time. Period is basically going from this uh, point going forward, coming back to the same point. So this is time for one period. However, we know that this is going to take really short time. And reaction time of human is also too high. So if we only have one period, and if we try to measure the time for that, the uncertainty or the error that we're going to have is going to be a lot. And that's because of our reaction uh, time. So it's better to have more uh, oscillations, and the ideal one is 10. So if you measure the time for 10 or 15 or 20, that is going to basically lower the percentage error. We will still have a problem with the like stopping and starting the time, but at least it's not going to be so much effective since the time is a, lo a lot more uh, longer than uh, our reaction time. All right. So that is why we need to have, we shouldn't have just one. We should have like uh, ideally 10 or 15, 20. It's up to you to make it more uh, accurate. All right, so I'm going to start with uh, five degrees. And I'm going to start the time once I'm ready. And I'm going to count 10, 15, or 20. And then I'm going to start uh, stop the time. All right, so that is ready. Uh, I'm just going to let it swing. And when I'm ready, I'm going to start. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to go to 15, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. All right, so I count a time for 15, and it is 
23.24. So what I'm going to do is, to be able to see how the angle is changing, I am going to use the same setup. The only thing that I need to change is the angle. So instead of 5 degrees, I'm going to have 10 degrees now. So make sure that you record that time. All right, now I am making it 10 degrees. And I'm going to swing it for 15 times. And I'm going to measure the time for that. All right. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So as you can see, the time for this is twenty three point fifty two. So what do we do? We are dividing those times by 15 because this is the time for 15 oscillation. So when we divide those by 15, our percentage, uh, percentage error is too low. And the other interesting thing is, as you can see, this is pretty close time. And ideally, the angle actually doesn't change the period. And to be able to see the last one, see like we are actually accurate with our results, I'm going to go to 15 degrees as well. And I'm going to swing it from 15 degrees. All right. So it's at 15 degrees right now. And I'm going to swing it. And let's see what's going to happen. Ready? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So the time for this is twenty three forty three. So we increase the angle by 10 degrees, but I am still measuring almost the same thing. So the difference is uh, 0.20 uh, seconds, which is really, really low. And if you uh, think that this is for 15 revolutions, then that means per one oscillation, your percent difference, or the difference in between the oscillations is 0.1 seconds, which is really, really, 0.01 seconds actually, 1 milliseconds. So that is a really small difference. So we can conclude that the angle that we are swinging actually doesn't affect the time of the oscillation. And that is pretty strange for the students because they are thinking, well, it is moving like a longer distance. But we also know that when you move it uh, longer, then you're going to have more force uh, or the angle of the force is going to be changing, so uh, it is going to give you the same time to uh, do your motion. All right. So angle doesn't change the time of the oscillation. All right. So we conclude that one in the first uh, investigation. Next investigation that we're going to have is if mass is affecting the period of the simple pendulum. And again, for this, uh, the design of the experiment is not going to be too difficult for the students again. Uh, what we need to do is we just need to change the mass and measure the time and see the effect. But one very important thing about this part, um, when we are having like more massive objects, something else is also changing. So for example, when I put this guy over here, the bottom line is right there. And the bottom line of this guy is right here. So there's a huge difference. That is like three centimeters difference. And when you're adding this instead of that, then you are increasing something. And that is your length. And right now, we are not investigating the effect of length. We are investigating the effect of the mass only. So make sure that you are holding uh, the length the same. And the other mistake that students do most of the time is they are measuring the distance from top to the bottom. 
but when we are um, measuring the distance it's going to be from the top to the center of mass of my mass and of course over here we are assuming that um, the string has no mass and actually we can neglect that because it's compared comparing to the masses that we have they are pretty small so we can ignore the mass of the string however when we are having uh, objects like this the force is acted on the center of mass so we need to consider the motion of the center of mass so that is why my distance my length is going to be from the top to the center of mass of the objects so make sure that you're keeping that distance the same all right because otherwise your measurements are not going to be accurate all right so right now i measure the distance since I don't care about the distance of my um, like length, I just care about uh, the center of mass from the bottom. So the center of mass of this guy is around there, so it is 11 centimeters away from the bottom. So just make sure that all of the masses, the center of mass of the masses are going to be 11 centimeters away from the bottom. All right, so once you make sure that, then you're just going to uh, start investigating. All right, again, I'm going to have 15 oscillations, and I'm going to start. And since we said that angle doesn't really change anything, so what we're going to do is it doesn't matter which angle we swing it with. Uh, we're just going to uh, swing with any angle that we want. All right, so let's start. And another thing that we're going to consider over here, the air resistance. So having like really small masses that might change your result a little bit. And that is going to be because of the air resistance. But of course, uh, we're going to be asking those questions to the students. Like what is the reason that this mass is having uh, like a little bit off data? All right, let's start. So I'm going to swing it with 10 degree, but again, it doesn't matter which angle that you swing it with. All right, so let's start. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So my time for this is 2267. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to change that mass with a, a little bit like heavier mass. And let's see what is going to be the time. All right, now we have changed our 20 grams with 50 grams. And let's measure the time uh, for 15 oscillations. And previously it was 22.67. Uh, so let's see what's going to be when we change the mass. Let's see if mass is affecting or not. All right, so again, the angle doesn't matter, so you just swing it from any angle that you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. So my new number is 22.84. So for 15 oscillation, the time difference is about just 20 milliseconds. And again, that is a pretty small number. So that means per one oscillation, you have one millisecond difference. And we can actually, from just two masses, you can conclude that the mass is also not affecting. But I'm going to uh, try with two more masses and then see uh, if it's going to change anything. All right, now we have replaced it with 100 grams. But again, make sure that your distance from the bottom to the center of mass is about 11 centimeters. All right, again, to the uh, center of mass, not to the bottom. All right, and then. I'm going to swing it again from any angle. 
or 15 times, and let's see what the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So my time now is 22.69. As you can see, there's only two milliseconds in between 20 grams and 100 grams. So that's a pretty, pretty close, and that is for 15 oscillations. So that means mass of the oscillation uh, pendulum is not affecting the period of it. Again, that is so interesting for the students because they're thinking that if you have something heavier, it's going to be slower. But actually, it doesn't. All right, so time is not changing when you change the angle or when you change the mass. Then, how is it changing? So the, the, uh, the last option that we're going to have is going to be the length. So we're going to change the length in the last part and then see the effect of um, the distance, the length of the string for the pendulum and its period. For the length investigation, what I'm going to do is uh, instead of uh, cutting different lengths of strings and wasting strings, uh, I am just going to use one string and uh, I am going to measure the distance ahead of time. So I'm, not, I'm just I'm going to know where, uh, where it's like 20 centimeters and where it's 25 centimeters. And from my like binder clip, I'm just going to let it go. And then whenever it's 20 centimeters, I'm just going to uh, lock it there and I'll just change that distance. And then I'm just going to be measuring the time for them. So I'm just going to mark the distances. And it's important that you have like seven, eight uh, data for that one uh, to be able to have better results uh, for the end. And again, my distance is going to be from the center of mass of the object. So make sure that it is somewhere in the middle. And my 20 centimeters is going to be right here. So I'm just going to mark 20 right there. So that is my 20. Make sure that you're able to see it. And I am going to measure 25. thirty. Thirty-five, fifty-five. So I know the my uh, I know my marks right now. So what I need to do is I'll just uh, use my binder clip. I'm just gonna lock it from there, and then that's going to be my uh, fifty-five centimeters. So I don't need to measure the distance from the center of mass and try to uh, like measure and set it the right distance. I just need to see the marks. And again, of course, since students are not going to be doing it alone, they don't need to uh, do it this way. One of the friends can hold the ruler, meter stick, and then they can just measure the distance or however they want to measure the distance. All right, now we have marked our uh, points. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hang it over. And then when we see the mark with a binder clip, we're just going to Put it over there and we're just going to lock it from there with the binder clip. And now we're just going to move it to the side. And now we have, this is our 20 centimeters. We already measured that so we don't need to do any other measurements right now. So we're just going to swing it and we're going to measure the time. And that is going to be the time for 20 centimeter length uh, pendulum. All right, let's start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, time for fifteen oscillation for uh, twenty centimeters is going to be thirteen sixty one. All right. All right. Let's move it down. Take the clip and move it until you see 25, the next mark. And once you see the mark, 
lock that again. So now this is 25 centimeters. And let's swing it and see the time for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So my time for 15 uh, oscillation for 25 centimeters is 15.15. .15. As you can see, whenever I increase the length, my time has increased. All right, let's keep going. And let's do it for 30. Again, you s s let it go. And when you see the mark, lock it. All right, and now this is my 30 centimeters, and let's see the time for 30 centimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So my time for 30 centimeters is going to be 16.72. Again, it has increased a little bit more. And we need to record those data. Again, lower it down five more centimeters. And swing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So time for 15 oscillations for uh, 35 centimeters is 18.04. And my last data point is going to be 55 centimeters. And let's swing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So my time for uh, 55 centimeters is going to be 22.47. So now we have seen that mass doesn't actually change the periods. The angle doesn't change, which are actually so interesting for students. Um, but the only thing that is changing my period uh, time for oscillation is the length. And as you go longer and longer, you're going to have uh, more and more time. So the period is going to increase. If you want, you can ask your students to figure out the actual relationship. So is it a linear or is it something else? So if you uh, draw the graph of your time to length data, you're going to be able to see if it's a linear uh, graph or it's something else. And next, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to analyze the data, and then we're going to come to the conclusion of the time and the length relationship. We have recorded our data, and now let's analyze them. Let's plot the uh, graph of it. For this, I'm going to use my Pasco Capstone uh, software. And I'm going to need table and graph together, so I'm going to click on this. And now I need to enter uh, my own data. So Instead of like selecting a measurement, I'm going to create my own. So create new user enter data. And I'm going to have length. And the unit is going to be meters. And then create new. That's going to be period. Or I'll put capital T. And the time, the unit is going to be seconds. But whenever I put uh, seconds, it's confusing with time. So I'm not going to put that. But that's not really important. All right, so now uh, I need to enter my data. 
And my length and periods uh, are as follows. So I record over here. And this is a time for 15 periods. So to be able to find the time for 1, I just need to divide them, all of them by 15. So enter this data divided by 15. All right, and then this is going to be the period for one oscillation. And whenever you double click on the corner, then it's going to uh, copy all of them. And uh, let's draw the graph of length the period. So I'm going to copy all of the lengths and paste them to length part. And then I'm going to go and copy all of the periods and copy them all and paste them all. All right, so now are we going to have periods or uh, length on the y-axis? So again, uh, that's important that students are actually getting familiar with what to put on the x and what to put on the y-axis. So on the x-axis, we are having the changed variable. On, a, on the y-axis, we are going to use the measured variable. And in our experiment, we change the length and we measure the time. So that is why on the x-axis, we're going to have our length. And on the y-axis, we're going to have our time. And when we have this data, that's how it looks like. And as you can see, uh, this is not a perfectly straight line. And it is a little bit curvy. And from here, if you want, you can just ask your students uh, the relationship in between time and length as like, is it directly proportional or inversely proportional? So the answer is directly proportional. But from the data, you can also ask like, is it going to be related with time or is it going to be something else? Like, is it going to be the square of it or is it going to be like a uh, cube of it? So you can uh, ask that question as well. And since it's curvy a little bit, maybe we can try uh, time square and length as well. Or uh, if you ask your students, they're going to try both of them. Like they will try to uh, take the square of length and then time. Or they're going to try time square and length. Uh, but I'm not going to spend time for all of them. Uh, but the, because length and period square are directly proportional. So the graph of time square to length should give me a linear uh, graph. And I'm just going to take the square of my periods. So enter, select your period, multiply it with its own. And then that's going to give you the square of that. And if you go down to the corner and then double click on it, it's going to measure all of the uh, values according to that. And now I can copy all of those values and paste them somewhere else. And for this, uh, if you want to see both of the datas like next to each other, right now I can just uh, paste it over here, but I want to try, uh, show it with another data. All right, I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to enter a new data, and that is going to be t squared. All right, and so this is my new data. And now I am going to show both of the graphs at the same page and let's see how it changes. So I'm going to have a new page and in this new page I'm going to need two graphs. So I'm going to go to the graph, I'm going to click on it, hold on to it and drag it to the corner, uh, the t to the right side in the middle and I'm going to drop it. And then I'm going to have my graph over here and then I'm going to go to the graph again, click on it, hold on to it drag it to the center of the first half. And when you drop it, then you're going to have both of the graphs uh, on the same page. And over here, I'm going to have, so as you can see now, I have all of the three datas that I have. I'm going to have time to length, and I'm going to have time square to length. As you can see here, this guy, the time to or period to length is a little bit curvy. 
So if you want, you can collect more and more data and then that's going to be a little bit more curvy. So if you want, you can make it like to, for them to be able to see it more clear, you can make that. And whenever we have T squared to length data, then that is a little bit more straight. So at least this is not curving in one direction. That is uh, tending to curve to the right, but this is not. So that is tending to go straight more. And um, basically that is showing you the relationship in between the length and the period. So length or period is going to be um, directly proportional with the square root of the length. All right, so that is our basically investigation of this part. And again, uh, however you want, you can ask for both or you can just ask for one of them. But this is how we uh, investigate, how we analyze the data. And the last part of our investigation, now we're going to uh, figure out the position time graph of my oscillation. So what kind of uh, motion is it making? So for this, you can use a couple of ways to do that. You can use a motion sensor. You can use a, uh, you can do a video analysis. Or you can have a paper underneath and then you're going to have a syringe prob uh, probably, so the syringe is going to work. You're going to have water inside the syringe and then you're just going to oscillate uh, the syringe. So when the water is leaking, it's going to uh, have the water coming down and then you're just going to move the paper with a constant speed. So paper is going to be running under and then it's going to be uh, drawing the shape of your uh, graph. So these are a couple of ways, but whichever is easier or whichever is most convenient for you, uh, you can choose which one to do. But I'm going to use video analysis. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to oscillate it once and I'm, then I'm going to uh, analyze that data with the uh, video analysis. All right, so we can start. Let's wing. All right, one is enough. Now we're going to uh, analyze this data. So we have recorded our video. Now we're just going to analyze it with our uh, program. Again, I'm going to use Pascal Capstan for that. We're going to go to the movie. And then when you click on movie, you're going to have open movie file. So you're going to click on the open movie file. And then select your file. And then it's going to upload. All right, when you're uploading your video, uh, it might take a little bit longer or it might seem like it is not like uploading it, but you just give it a little bit of uh, time, then it's going to upload it. Once it's uploaded, then you can use your uh, video. All right, now uh, over here, I have this meter stick to be able to uh, give a reference for one meter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record, play my movie. And whenever I'm st uh, about to start, I'm going to go to the collection, uh, data collection part. All right, now we're going to move to video analysis mode. And so once you enter there, as you can see, you have your x and y axes. And then you're going to have your ruler over here. So that is for it to be able to decide which distance is which distance. So you're going to say that this is one, this is your one meter. So you move one end over here and the other end right there. Then you're telling that this much of distance is equal to one meter. And you can move your X and Y coordinates system as well, uh, but you don't need to do that. All right. So we're going to be moving on the x-axis, and this is my mass, and I'm going to be uh, putting points on this, and I'm going to uh, follow it, and it's going to go frame by frame, and I'm just going to put the dots, and then after that, we're going to analyze its motion. All right, so I am keep putting points, and once I release it, all right, now it start to move. So I'm going to go frame by frame. And I'm going to be putting the dots at the center of mass of my 
mass. And I'm following the mass. And I'm going to put those dots for one oscillation. So I'm going to let it go all the way end. And then I'm going to follow it when it comes back. Now it's going back. It is getting a little bit difficult to see the mass, but you can still see the black mass right there. So you keep adding your points to the mass. Again, another option to do this is using your motion sensor. And you can just draw the position time graph with your uh, motion sensor. All right, now I have completed uh, putting my points for one oscillation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new page and then uh, observe the graph. So add page. And I am just going to need a graph. So double click on graph. And uh, what is my data? Over here you can see that it is saying that video analysis. And I'm going to go to object one. And over here, it's going to give you six options. And you can see more. Uh, so it is also going to measure the angu angular stuff. But we're just going to need the position time graph of it. And my motion is going to be on the x-axis. So I'm just going to need position time graph of my object on the x-axis. So this is the position on the x, position on the y, velocity on the x, velocity on the y, acceleration on the x, acceleration on the y. So I am going to select that x. And now, as you can see, this is your motion. All right, so at the beginning, I just put random, uh, not random, I just put uh, the points until I see my motion. And what happened, this is the graph for one oscillation. As you can see, this is a pretty good uh, data. And this is basically a sine wave, all right? And this is for one oscillation. So if I did it for another one, so that would add another um, sine wave like this. So you would have, you would be going up and down, all right? So if you have a complete set of it, then you're going to have up and down motion. And that is a basically a sine wave. And this is the reason why simple harmonic motion is uh, taught before uh, waves. And this is basically the introduction to the waves. All right, so that's how you do the analysis of uh, the motion of your simple harmonic motion. So what are the science practices that we uh, covered in this experiment? So the first one is, Students can apply mathematics routines to quant uh, quantities that describe natural phenomena. So in the first part, uh, basically when we're investigating what is changing the period of the simple pendulum, uh, we have discovered that mass is not changing anything. Length is changing it with the square, uh, the root square of it. And again, the angle is not changing anything. So we were able to figure out uh, by analyzing the data of that. And the next, Students can design a plan for collecting data to answer a particular scientific question. So throughout the experiment, we were trying to figure out, we had the question, what is changing the time of period? And the last part, how is going to uh, the graph look like, the position time graph of a simple pendulum going to look like? So to be able to figure that out, uh, we designed the experiment. So that was the practice of that part. Next is. Students can collect data to answer a particular scientific question. After they design their experiments, they just collected the data to see uh, the relationship in between the variables. Students can analyze data to identify patterns or relationships. When we were describing the relationship in between length and time, and mass and time, and angle and time, we had our data and we uh, looked at them and then we analyzed them to see the relationships. 
And these are the science practices that we uh, have covered over here. And that is basically the end of our experiment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.